Oh, hello, hello. Hello, yes, please. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Clara, how are you? Hello. How are you, Clara? Hello, how are you? Good afternoon. Yes. Afternoon. Hi, Lisa, how are you? Sorry, I um, I had a headset in, didn't realize it. <laughs> Sorry. I had one of those domestic delays due to new ways of handling domestic issues, like shopping. When it arrives at home, it arrives and that's it. Who arrives home where? Um, so we have gone back onto proper lockdown uh, as a family because of the increased number of cases in our village. Oh. Um, and so we have the groceries delivered to our house instead of us going to the shops, especially because we've had a couple of our shops already closed down because of COVID cases in there. Um, so when, when they arrive, you just have to go. And I was like, oh, but I have to go into the meeting. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's, yeah. I was slightly delayed because of that. <laughs> uh, Botswana is now also getting slowly, the way of community transmission now for the first time confirmed. So we're also going into a more... So, yeah, yeah, you're gonna yeah, I'm not sure how it's for you, Patricia. Oh, sorry, Pat uh, Patricia, this is Clara. She's, uh, we're both sort of coordinating the webinar series. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Clara. Uh, uh, thank you, Lisa. Pleasure. Hi, Patricia. Pleasure. Thank you. Where are you from originally? <laughs> Malawi. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Malawian, actually. Um, yeah, I've been here since. <laughs> and and, and you are calling. You are calling from where? I, I'm. Go, I'm joining from. Uh, Can you let me share my screen? And I'm also Simon. Yep, that's right. I'm now on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Clara, can you let me share my screen? I've done it now. Try it. Your co host. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Welcome everyone to week four of the SODEC TFCA webinar series, session number eight. Um, thank you for joining today. Um, I hope some of you also participated in the Tuesday session. Um, today's session will be on leap implementation in Malawi, Zambia, TFCA. Uh, my name is Lisa Blenken, uh, SODEC GIZ's um, uh, officer of, for the SODEC TFCA network. And together with Clara Boccaccino, I'm um, the admin of all the uh, sessions. Um, before we start, and I give the word to Simon Montala, who, Montali, who will moderate today's session, uh, just some very brief um, rules of engagement. Um, please add your name, institution, and country in the chat box so that we get to know you and see who, where you're from uh, and, and who you are. Um, and then with regard to um, if you have any questions, um, you're at any time welcome to put questions in the chat box. We will make note of them, even if you're, you have a question at the beginning of a presentation, uh, please, please put it in. Uh, when we're in a, in a, in a actual discussion time, uh, please feel free also to raise your hand if you want to speak. Um, but even if you have written down a question, the moderator may ask you to just um, uh, unmute yourself and put your video on so that you can, um, can ask the question directly. Um, today's session, um, uh, for those that have participated in other deep learning sessions, it won't be only a moderated discussion. We will have a presentation diving more into the Malawi Zambia case study, explaining everything um, before going into discussion time. Um, but without further ado, I would like to 
introduce today's moderator. Um, as already said, Dr. Simon Montali, who is a wildlife bi um, biologist and ecologist in both terrestrial as, as well as freshwater ecosystems. He has 38 years of experience in biodiversity conservation um, and his um, experience spans over entire Southern Africa and especially also on TFCAs, the three major TFCAs, Great Limpopo, Kaza, as well as Malawi, Zambia. He has uh, worked for or with uh, throughout his career. Um, and currently, Dr. Montali is the chief technical advisor um, to the USAID Vukanao project uh, on combating wildlife crime, crime based in Pretoria. Um, Simon, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Lisa mentioned, uh, my name is Simon Montali. Um, our, our webinar this afternoon is on LIP. Uh, I know that um, uh, LIP um, presentation have been made earlier this week and I think last week as well. So there have been a lot of discussion centered on combating wildlife climb. Today's um, uh, discussions will be, presentations will be on um, really field level experience. More specifically, we'll be uh, learning from Malawi, Zambia, TFCA. But before I get into that, um, I would like to um, share my screen here. <clears throat> Sorry, um, just give me a moment. I'm trying to share the screen. Hey, can everyone see the screen? Yes, all clear, uh, Simon. Thank you very much. Um, so like I said, that um, we've had so many presentations on um, on the leap and also uh, combating wildlife crime. But before we get into the actual uh, presentation and discussions, I just wanted to highlight some of the key strategies and protocols that we have in the Sadiq region. So in other words, there's no shortage of protocols and strategies, and maybe what is the key challenge is how we are implementing these protocols and strategies. I just want to highlight a few among these. We have the SADC protocol on wildlife conservation and law enforcement of 1999, which has been the framework upon which many TFCs have been established in Southern Africa. And this uh, uh, protocol uh, in particular promotes enforcement of wildlife laws within, between and among member states in the SADC region. The second one is the strategic inductive plan of the organ for peace, security, and politics of August 2010. This particular um, uh, uh, indicative plan identifies, among others, poaching as a serious challenge facing uh, security. Um, and the strategy recommends collaboration among security agencies in fighting crime, including wildlife crime. The third one is the SADC Biodiversity Action Plan of 2013. Again, this advocates for you know, uh, uh, cooperation um, among multiple agencies in undertaking law enforcement. The third one, which perhaps less known by many people, is the SADC uh, Mutual Legal Assistance Protocol on Criminal Matters, which again um, can be used in facilitating extradition of fugitives from um, wildlife crime prosecution. And lastly, the one I want to highlight and the subject of this afternoon's presentation is the SADC law enforcement and anti poaching strategy. This particular strategy sets a very ambitious goal of significantly reducing the level of poaching and illegal wildlife trade in the SADC region by 2021, which is just two years to come. Um, I think 
before we really get into serious business, I would like to highlight the key, um, the key objectives um, of the SADC LIP, which include enhancing legislation and judicial processes, minimizing wildlife crime and, um, um, and wildlife trade, illegal wildlife trade, integrating people of nature, sustainable, uh, sustainable trade and use of natural resources. And number five is improvement and strengthening feed operations. These are strategies are quite clear. In terms of implementation, the SADC LEAP is supposed to be implemented at two levels. The first level is at national level, and the other level is at transboundary scale. And also due to the nature of interest in combating wildlife crime, multiple agencies are involved in combating wildlife crime, both at national and transboundary landscape scale. To share experiences at a field level, today we have got two uh, guest speakers. The first is Mr. Nason Tembo. Mr. Nason Tembo is not new to the conservation sector. Um, he started his career in wildlife conservation in the Department of National Parks and Wildlife in Zambia. Um, from there, he joined the African Wildlife Foundation, supporting rehabilitation of the Banyin National Park in Mozambique. After that, he moved and headed the African Wildlife Foundation Heartland Program in what used to be called Kazungula Heartland, which is a precursor to the Kaza TFCA. Uh, Mr. Na Mr. Tembo is currently working for Peace Parks Foundation in Malawi, Zambia, TFCA as a joint operations coordinator. So Mr. Tembo will be sharing with us his experience in domestication of the SADC LIP at ground level scale. Mr. Tembo, uh, the floor is yours. Can you please share your experiences in the uh, Malawi Zambia TFCA? Thank you, moderator, and good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, proceed. Yeah, sure. Can you can you see the slides? Okay. Yeah, sure. I see the slide now. Uh, I work as joint operations coordinator in the Malawi Zambia TFCA. Uh, background to Malawi Zambia TFCA is that. Uh, Zambia and Malawi have got a long history of collaboration through the Joint Permanent Commission, which has been running since, 20, since 1980. Uh, in terms of uh, the Transfrontier project, the negotiations for the project started around uh, 2004. And then in 2014, there was an MOU which was signed between Zambia and, and Malawi, which led to the treaty being signed by the two heads of states in, uh, in July 2015. Uh, Malawi, Zambia, Transfrontier Conservation Area, which is in abbreviation called MAZA TFCA, has two components. That is the North Luangwa and Nika Vwaza component and the Kasungu Lukusuzi component. However, the North Luangwa Vwaza TFCA has got the subcomponents, which is North Luangwa and then Nyika Vwaza and Chama uh, subcomponents. Uh, in terms of domestication of the LIP strategy, the next slide. In terms of 
domestication of the LIP strategy uh, at national level. Next slide, please. No, no, no. Yeah. It, oh, no, no, no. Slide before that. Yeah. Before that one. In terms of domestication of the LIP strategy, uh, at national level in Malawi, we've got a national coordination task force, which uh, comprises the Department of National Parks and Wildlife, Malawi Police, Malawi Army, Malawi Revenue Authority and, Cor and Corruption Bureau, the National Investigations Asset Agency and Department of Forestry, and finance and the intelligence. Uh, Zambia, yeah, and it also includes the Gilongwe Wildlife Trust, the Directorate of Public Prosecution, Minister of Finance and Veterinary Services for your forensic support. Uh, Zambia, Yeah, and national level coordination in Zambia, it, it involves the Department of National Parks Zambia, Zambia Army, Zambia Police, Zambia National Service, Air Force, Office of the President, Special Division, Drug Enforcement Commission. Basically, Zambia has got 17 uh, components or departments that are involved in the national uh, task force, uh, SADIC LIP task force at national level. The role for the national LIP task force is the coordination and develop, development and delivery of capacity building for law enforcement, facilitation of investigation of wildlife cases, and the timely prosecution of wildlife cases. It also advocates use of multiple laws in the pro prosecution of wildlife cases and advocates for the review of legislation and other related and also strengthens the collaboration and coordination of coordination of participating agencies and facilitates collecting analysis of intelligence and dissemination of a, a two appropriate agencies and also coordinates the campaigns on impact of illegal wildlife trade to the general public and other stakeholders on wildlife crime. At, the, at ground level, uh, both departments of national parks and wildlife facilitated the review of the legislation on the National Parks and Wildlife Acts, which significantly increased the penalties for poaching and wildlife trafficking. Uh, at, at local level, as I indicated, uh, I'm covering Nyika, Bwaza, and, and Chama. So the focus here will be on the area in which I'm operating in. Uh, in our area, we have developed the, the law enforcement strategy, which advocates for the standardization of law enforcement training, standardization of uh, rations, and also the establishment of the uh, intelligence and investigations unit especially focusing on Nick and Waza, because the Zambian side on Chama already has an ex established uh, intelligence and investigation. Uh, we also have in the two areas at district level interagency uh, coordinating committees and intergovernmental uh, coordination. 
The strategy also focuses on joint operations along the, uh, the boundaries. We have also established a standardized pe performance-based incentive system for the law enforcement officers. We have within the strategy standardized the data collection and use of SMART, which I think we'll, we'll see later. We are also establishing a rapid response unit, which will operate at transboundary level, and we envisage to have a helicopter and uh, a dog unit. Other things that the, the strategy has looked at is trying to improve the living conditions of the field personnel, and mostly looking at the accommodation. And this is because most of the accommodation in the area is, is in dilapidated states, but the state, but the renovation of houses has started. Uh, we also advocate for intelligence information sharing between Malawi and Zambia, and, and also conduct joint quarterly review missions, uh, reviews of the law enforcement uh, operations in the, in the three sites. Uh, I've already talked of the incentives, the rates that we are using are standard, so it's the same rate in, in Nyika, in Bwaza, and in Chama. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in terms of data, data collection and analysis, this is a sample of a map where uh, the patrol coverage is being recorded and all illegal incidences are, are monitored. So all the three sites are using the same in the same system of monitoring law enforcement operations on the ground. Next slide. We we'll move to the next slide. Where is it? Yep. No, 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 no. Uh, like I'd indicated, in terms of law enforcement, intelligence and the invest investigation, Zambia is is quite ahead and they will be conducting uh, intelligence and investigations using the IIU based in Chama. Raman, can you we get to the next slide? Okay, yes. So some of the success stories, uh, I think in, in, in 2019, there was a, a poacher who was based in Malawi, but was doing elephant hunting in both Vwaza and in, in Chama. Using the intelligence unit in Chama, this suspect was tracked until through a joint operation between Department of National Parks, Malawi, and Zambia. He was uh, apprehended and the 0.358 spot rifle was recovered. And this year on July 7th, there was another uh, intelligence information of a group of poachers that were planning to move into Vwaza to poach. And this information was gathered by the intelligence unit in Chama which then led to a joint operation where three shotguns, three homemade sh shotguns were recovered and the suspects uh, are being prosecuted in, in Malawi. Mm. Challenges. So these are, this was the team when they link, linked up. Yeah, the, the challenges that are faced, the one in our operation area, one there is lack of an IIU unit in 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 Nyika and Vwaza. Fortunately, we are putting up a team of 12 that are starting training at the police college on the 3rd of August. So 
It's a six-week six weeks training, so this will be resolved soon. Uh, we've got a challenge of uh, restrictions on allowable coverage cross boundary. Uh, at the moment, I think the operations are restricted to a radius of uh, three kilometers from the boundary. So at times, the pursuit, joint pursuit of uh, suspects is, is, is limited. Uh, the operation area lacks a radio communication, we, which has an effect on, the, on all the operations. The road infrastructure is terrible. And the training of field rangers is at different levels. So there is lack of the harmonization of, uh, of accommodation. There is a challenge of of low field ranger numbers, and generally the salaries for the field rangers is low. Uh, we've got limitations on uh, holding meetings, interagency meetings, and intergovernmental meetings with, within the operational area. Of course, there are sol solutions to this. In terms of IIU, I've already stated that uh, we are we are working on uh, having uh, an IIU for Nika and Bwaza. Uh, restrictions on, on coverage, this is something that uh, is being taken up as we look at the policy harmonization within the, the TFC CA. Uh, we are also establishing cross-border radio communication and at the moment, it's going to tender. It's going to tender. So we, we are well ahead of that. Uh, some of the main access roads, we are going to do some works on them to ease movement, especially during the, the rainy season. The rehabilitation of houses okay. is going, and we hope they can be increased. <laughs> Uh, in terms of provision of uh, intergovernmental we have now provided the budget for these meetings to, to be held. We hope in a few months we'll be having regular meetings. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Simon. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Nelson, um, for your presentation, very informative. Uh, in terms of questions, I know that a number of you might have questions for Nelson, but please bear with us if you can hold on your questions till the end of the presentations. We've got two presentations. But before moving ahead, uh, Nelson, um, you had a slide on integration of people and nature. Uh, can you just uh, highlight um, major uh, strides in the northern sector of the Malawi Zambia TFCA on how you are integrating people of nature and more specifically, how are they being involved in combating wildlife crime in that sector? Yeah, uh, we are working with the communities in line with the, the National Parks and Wildlife Acts, both in Zambia and in Malawi. In Zambia, we work with the community resource boards, and in Malawi, we work with the natural resource committees. Uh, in Malawi, one of the initiatives that is, uh, has happened is that the local communities are allowed to, to have beehives in the protected areas. So the, through the natural resource committees, they are able to set beehives. However, through these committees, they are also involved in the snare collection and in the encouraging their communities to surrender illegal firearms. I think that was seen in the, the snares and the firearms that were in one of the slides. Yeah. In Zambia, so in Malawi, we also work with the Total Land Care 
that is encouraging conservation farming and other livelihood projects. In Zambia, within the game management areas, we are working with Comaco, who is spearheading the market conservation market for conservation approach in terms of uh, agriculture and beekeeping. So the communities are really involved at that level. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sure there'll be a further question and comments on the same. Um, can we now uh, move to the uh, second presenter? Our second presenter is uh, Mr. Patricio Dazera. Uh, Patricio has got a five years experience in wildlife management. Um, he, just like myself, started um, uh, his career in the Department of National Parks and Wildlife in Malawi, where he, he rose amongst the ranks to, to a position of divisional manager. And after that, he joined Africa Parks as a country director for Malawi, and one of the most challenging um, um, uh, uh, engagement that he had was to rehabilitate Majete Water Reserve, which was completely depleted of wildlife. But during his tenure, he managed to restore the park in terms of wildlife, and as we speak, Majete is one of the best managed uh, protected area in Malawi. Currently, uh, Mr. Dazera is the Chief Technical Adv Chief of Party for the Malawi Zambia Trans Frontier Project on Combating Wildlife Crime um, um, under IFO um, and funded by USAID. Uh, Patricio, uh, the floor is yours. If you could also please highlight in terms of um, how the lead strategy being domesticated in Malawi, Zambia, TFC highlighting how you are influencing legislative reform as well as institutional and financial sustainability for the task forces that have been established both in Malawi and Zambia, including the transboundary one. So over to you, Mr. Dazela. Thank you, Simon. The introductions are in order. Um, I think I will talk about the southern part of the landscape, um, Zambia, Malawi. 25 years ago, I think there used to be lots of um, elephants and rhinos in the Malawi, Zambia landscape, including um, as far as uh, South Luangwa. But come two years ago, the populations of the two species, the elephant, the rhino, were completely exterminated. And it was the wish of the two governments of Malawi and Zambia uh, to look for uh, partners who would uh, bring back the lost glory um, of the two countries' uh, landscape. Um, the two governments identified IFO as a recipient to USID funding to develop and manage the landscape for a period of uh, five years. The major goal of this project is to ensure that the elephant population stabilize or increase in targeted landscape through decrease in poaching related mortalities. The project employs a participatory approach in wildlife crime prevention. Nasuna talked about communities. I want to talk about communities, uh, more or less I'm talking about higher level sort of you know, engagement, but one of the, the strategies includes community engagement. Um, if you look at um, the landscape, 32,000 square kilometers, it's a big area. Um, TFC includes Zambia, North Luangwa, National Park, South Luangwa National Park, Luambe National Park, Lukusuzi, and Malawi's Kasungu National Parks. I think someone you can demonstrate your casa. I think the, the, the circle, the, the, the yellow circle, is the landscape I'm talking about. Thank you. The next slide, please. 
Um, to ensure that we can stabilize elephant population, decrease elephant-related mortalities, the project, IFO, um, through its partners, came up with four strategies. And uh, the strategies, as you see on the screen, are to strengthen the interagency and cross-border cooperation, coordination and information sharing, to combat wildlife crime collectively, but also improve law enforcement capacity to increase overall effectiveness in enforcing wildlife crime laws. The project also intends or it does provide for a, a platform for engaging law communities as stakeholders in regional governance and wildlife protection, building transparency with law enforcement and securing benefits for communities but also we bolster prosecutorial and judicial capacity to effectively investigate, prosecute, and convict wildlife poachers. Um, these four strategies basically are unpacked in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the presentation, but in brief, Strategy number one, which I did indicate that it's strengthening the interagency cross-border cooperation, uh, cooperation, information sharing to combat wildlife crime between the two countries, Zambia and Malawi. One of the aspects that we do is to train investigation and intelligence officers from the two countries, uh, Zambia and Malawi, but also we continue to provide you know, workshops um, in terms of uh, training, in terms of training, sorry. My screen is gone up a little bit. In terms of train, in terms of uh, crime investigation unit intelligence operations from Zambia and Malawi. So the pictures you're seeing are the cross-border sort of trainings that we, we do uh, Zambia and Malawi together. Strategy number, uh, strategy number two, uh, Simon, uh, can I go to the next slide? Um, strategy number two is improving law enforcement capacity to increase overall effectiveness in enforcing wildlife crime laws. If you look at that slide, you will see that uh, I think over a ton of ivory to date has been confiscated uh, in the two landscapes. The convictions of some Chinese are landmark sort of conviction, uh, I think of late, you heard this year that um, nine Chinese were convicted to a total cumulative jail term of 56 years. I think this is also about um, commitment by the two governments, um, uh, Malawi uh, uh, and, and Zambia, uh, to upgrade their legal um, acts, the wildlife acts, to make sure that they provide punitive sentences but also the voluntary surrender. I think last week, uh, 225 kilograms of ivory and wildlife skins of other protected species like leopard, lion, and cheetah, according to DNPW Malawi, is valued at $20,000. Um, it's basically a testimony that um, I think the project is closing all the borders. Um, these uh, trophies, including the 225 kilograms, I think were being kept by somebody who was still thinking that there would be an opportunity for him one day to dispose of um, uh, these, uh, these trophies. But seeing that I think um, the landscape is locked up, there's no opportunity, they decided to uh, come and open and surrender these uh, trophies to DNPW. And when you see on the other side, it just shows the, the total race at this year. The other strategy that I will conclude with is uh, improved law enforcement capacity to increase overall effectiveness in, uh, in enforcing wildlife crime laws. Um, that's strategy number three. That's um, bolstering prosecutorial and judicial capacity to effectively investigate prosecute and convict wildlife criminals. Training of prosecutors and magistrates in the two countries. Um, monitoring uh, the 75 arrests in both Malawi and Zambia. 
um, organizing field trips, both Malawi and Zambia. Uh, some of the, I think the sort of uh, activities that we provide to ensure that um, the two landscapes, uh, prosecutors, magistrates, are uh, able um, to, in, to sort of interface uh, and be able to, you know, have a combined view uh, of um, the seriousness of the wildlife crime. Next slide, please. Simon, next slide. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Oops, sorry. Now, now we, we come to, can, not this one, the other one, um, the first one, please. The first, the other slide, please. Simon, the, the, first, the first slide. Uh, this is the first one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I think the slides are... Uh, you've done strategy three. Yes, then I must go to the next slide. Yeah, okay. okay this one. No, that one I've done already. Uh, yeah, that one. Thank you very much. Um, no, uh, uh, this is the next one. Yeah, this no, that's one. one. Yeah. That's one, yeah. Um, now, how, how, do, how do we implement SADIC LIP? I think that's um, the core essence of this uh, discussion. Uh, legislative and institutional and financial sustainability mechanisms. Uh, I think this is key uh, for any organization to function. There has to be an institutionalized sort of structure that provides support to the activities of uh, uh, the landscape. One of the strides to address the legislative, institutional, and financial sustainability mechanism is the establishment of a transboundary lead task force for Mazara TFCA in December 2019. The transboundary lead task force includes the following agencies drawn from both countries, Malawi and Zambia, uh, DNPW, Minister of Finance, Judiciary, Intelligence, that's Police, Finance, and Military, Customs, and Corruption Bureau or Commission, Immigration, Conservation NGOs, that are Wildlife Trust, um, Wildlife Crime Prevention, that provide advisory and capacity building. The roles of the Transponder Task Force are outlined below. Um, this uh, include uh, lobbying for legislative reforms to resolve current challenges. I think it has worked in Malawi. Um, uh, for a person that is uh, found with ivory in Malawi, there is no fine sentence. It's basically a custodial sentence. I think this, has, this was a result of lobbying government to make sure that um, wildlife crime is a serious crime in the country, just like any other serious crimes. So um, part of the lobbying will include easement of restrictions and movement of law enforcers and their equipment across international boundaries. Easement of hurdles encountered in, in repatriating uh, fugitives from wildlife crime persecution and exhibits, but also harmonization of penalties for wildlife crime offenses. I mean, it doesn't make sense that Malawi has uh, very punitive sentences and Zambia um, does ha doesn't have that. So there's need to harmonize this because sometimes people, poacher, I mean, poachers will find the other side easier to manipulate than the other side. So if we are going to close the landscape from would be poachers, then both sides of the countries must uh, upgrade the, the, the elephant or the wildlife crime offenses to be serious offenses. Another slide, please. Um, secondly, we need to address the issue of corruption. This is something that came out very clear in most of the meetings that, that, that we've had. Um, sometimes it's a corruption that kills the initiatives of the rangers, of those people who are in operation, to make sure that um, the right punishments are given to the offenders. Now, we want to develop targeted strategies to address corruption, which will include vetting and lifestyle auditing of the LIP task force members. The third one, we would also want to facilitate intelligence gathering and sharing across the landscape. 
And um, this will be the responsibility of the lead task force to develop standard operation procedures to ensure that critical processes, responsibilities related to law enforcement are routinely followed and action developed. Also standard operating procedures for intelligence gathering, establishment of information net networks, electronic information sharing, intelligence data organization and analysis, but also intelligence feedback and sharing. It also helped to case development, charging and uh, providing guidelines for prosecuting the suspects. Also monitoring offenders, both in the courts and also in jail, to make sure that nobody jumps bail, nobody jumps um, uh, sentence. Fourth is develop institutional mechanism for sustaining coordination of both national and transboundary elite task forces. Considering the multiplicity of the agencies included in the task forces, there is need uh, to coordinate, uh, there is need to coordinate agencies and stakeholders participating in the combating more lifetime landscape. This should be in the form of very, a very lean secretariat or other mechanisms that have proven successful in their TFCs or countries. USID Vocanal is supporting this activity in collaboration with IFO, LEAP, Task Force, and the other key stakeholders. Um, I, I think uh, I, must, I must say that um, since I joined the landscape, I found uh, Vulcanau very helpful in terms of facilitating most of um, these structures that would be otherwise very helpful to ensure that there is some form of sustainability, be it financial or uh, 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 ecological sustainability. Next slide, please. I know I'm, I'm running against time. Um, Next slide, please. Simon, next slide. Yeah, you got it. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, development, I think this is the first, uh, the fifth uh, sort of uh, strategy between lobbying. Uh, development of financial sustainability strategy for LIP task forces operations. Financial sustainability is critical to enable the LIP task forces to fund operations in a regular, predictable manner over multiple years. In collaboration with USID Vulcanab, consultant has been hired to assist the processes. I must, I must emphasize that um, most of these activities that are taking place in the landscape now are project-based. But how long will these projects last? I think they have got a lifespan. And what happens after the lifespan has expired? So this, this consultant will diagnose the current level of funding of the LIP task forces develop business plans at the basis for identifying sources of long-term funding of the LEAP task forces, exploring merits of established LEAP trust fund as a mechanism to meeting the long-term financial needs of the task forces, including means of capitalizing it. But D, we want also to develop um, auxiliary administration, operational tools for the fund, such as administrative and financial procedures manual, which will specify policies and procedures to guide the funds day to day. Investment policy, setting out the core principles for managing the funds access and any other tools considered critical to administration of the recommended uh, lead trust fund. This work has already commenced, but I think to a large extent, it will depend on um, partners, it will depend on the donors uh, to make sure that um, after, after this consultancy, uh, this, uh, the task force um, is been formed already. We need to see how do we operationalize that in the long term using what the findings from the consultancy. Another slide, please. Seem to be running out of time, yes. The highlights of success in the collaborative um, combining, uh, that's combating wildlife crime is um, the arrest of the Congolese military intelligence officer and two others in possession of ivory. We might think that um, some of these um, uh, culprits are from the two landscapes, but you can see that even people beyond the Zambia, Congo side, uh, can also trespass the landscape. So that was, that was really um, a highlight because um, we did uh, arrest this military intelligence officer and two others but also the arrest of a Zambian police special unit intelligence officer and two others with two rhino horns. I did say that um, 
some of this, uh, this poaching of, for ivory or rhino horn, etc., is being instigated by people at a higher level. And, and sometimes we, we have to fight people that are basically well versed with, um, with the law. Um, but I'm happy that we are able to, you know, um, square up with these uh, uh, sort of people. The conviction, uh, 32 convictions that uh, happened this year, including the 50-year, the 56-year combined jail term for nine Chinese, but as I said, also the voluntary surrender of 225 kgs and, and, and the $20,000 worth of trophy skins was actually the highlights of um, uh, this, um, this project um, above uh, other activities that are happening in the landscape. Another slide, please. Another slide, please. Yep, you got it. <clears throat> yes, awesome. What are the lessons on success factors? Um, government's political will and willingness to amend wildlife legislation to stiffen penalties. What are the success factors? Political will by governments. Multi-sectoral collaboration through formation of intelligence committee, um, which has evolved into task force now. Uh, Long-term collaboration between Malawi and Zambia through joint permanent commissions. Since 1980, it helps to consolidate trust among the partners. Donor financial support, USID, in the case of our landscape, KFW, UK Aid, World Bank, and GIZ. But also support from NGOs, NGOs, capacity building in various aspects, including development of prosecutor's guide, guidelines. Use USID um, uh, now trace. I think these are some of the, um, the, the sort of support that we, we get. These are some of the success factors. Can I get to the last one? Um, yes. This, um, in brief, and uh, because of time, I had to rush the presentation um, uh, to, to leave a bit of space for, for questions. Uh, thank you, Simon, and, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Patricio. I think this was very inspiring and um, informative. I think at this stage, um, we should open up for questions. Um, I have one question already. I think um, the question is on the multiplicity of the task force agencies. How are these harmonized or coordinated? Uh, this question can be taken by Patricia or, or Nassim. Who wants to go first? I could go yeah. first. Um... I could go first. The, the, um, the, co the coordination <clears throat> is a challenge. Currently, we are basically using more or less um, support from Vokanao to bring these two parties, Malawi and Zambia, together. But there are also national, uh, multi, you know, national combating wildlife uh, crime uh, sort of agencies that. Uh, um, like Malawi, we have the intelligence community in Zambia, we have got the same. So at a national level, they also meet. But the actual coordination, basically international coordination between the landscape Zambia and Malawi, it has to be facilitated by some, uh, some, some, some agencies like Vokanao in this case. Maybe until, maybe until we have the, 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 the legitimized task force, yeah. Uh, and also, I think um, this is why you mentioned about looking at the institutional sustainability issue. So it's both of an issue of looking at long-term coordination, as well as effectiveness of that institutional arrangement uh, to coordinate multiple agencies. I think this is one of the assignments that uh, uh, Patricia mentioned, that um, there is a consultant who has been hired. He's going to look at different mechanisms of ensuring that these multiple agencies are well coordinated. He also referred to um, an example of having lean secretariats to begin in the region. For example, the Casa TFCA uh, has got a, a secretariat, so there'll be lesson learned from that. I'm aware also that the Great Limpopo TFCA is also looking at similar mechanisms. So there'll be um, cross landscape learning. Um, so I, I believe that um, 
we'll see over time to see what best can can be a mechanism that can be adapted to coordinate multiple agencies. Um, from myself, I think I've got a question for you, Patricio. Um, from your presentation, I didn't hear anything about community engagement in the southern component of the um, uh, Malawi Zambia TFCA. Can you just highlight those both opportunities and challenges that you are facing in integrating communities, particularly in support of combating wildlife crime? No, thank you, Simon. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very brief. Um, sorry, Patricia, there is, sorry. there is one question that comes now that you can maybe incorporate uh, from Philip, who says, um, um, beyond the national district level and community, are community representatives included in national structure? So maybe you can incorporate that in your reply. Okay. Um, thank you, Simon. I, I think that, you know, you know this, um, this project has one of its strategies as community engagement. And, and community engagement basically here it's broader, but we localized it that we need to concentrate on communities around the landscape. And, and, and basically through the structures um, uh, that Nasser mentioned earlier on, we have similar structures. And uh, what, is, what is more critical is that as we plan to, to make sure that uh, um, I, I think the, the, the elephant population increases, we, we, are, we should be making sure so that uh, the increase of the elephant does not create a livelihood losses to communities. So we basically like um, are proposing to uh, our partners to look at issues of, um, of, of, of presenting, uh, put, uh, putting up or a fence, but also we, we, we do provide employment. Um, and and uh, I think every quarter over thirty forty thousand dollars $40,000 goes into, uh, into communities. I think the whole thing about community is, is for the organization that deal with communities to provide that kind of emotional appeal where the landscape becomes part of the community and that they don't feel um, uh, you know, alienated from the activity. So the project provides that platform through the institutions that have been set up, like Kawakoda and Kasungu, the Sierra Bees on the Zambian side, as a platform for engagement. And this uh, works very well. And also in terms of monitoring, in terms of sensitization uh, of these communities, we're using the same, the same platforms. But as regards to bringing, the, um, bringing the, um, uh, this cross-border collaboration uh, together, as I indicated earlier on, um, uh, and Simon did mention that, to say, I, I think he, the structures that are there at the moment are more national and uh, not cross-border. So we would, want, we would prefer that um, possibly the establishment of um, the task force, the LIB task force, would provide a framework for coordinating uh, this kind of uh, engagement at a landscape level, because um, there is no entity at the moment that are actually facilitating this kind of you know, uh, coordination, apart from the projects that are doing it in a sectoral sort of um, arrangement. Uh, maybe Nelson, I see you there. You can, can come in and, and clarify certain areas and so activities are more or less similar. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, if if Nelson does have anything to add, I think we've got a couple of questions here and comments. I'll just focus on questions. There's one on uh, data capture. Um, there's one question which here says, what data correction tools are used for operations? Is there one system used in both sides and by all involved? I believe that Nasson, you mentioned about smart. So can you just respond that? And um, Nasson, you could start responding if Patricia has got addition on that. So it's how data is corrected. And also below, there's another similar question here, uh, which is, um, is there a smart system in the area administered centrally and all data analyzed centrally. In other words, is data collection centralized and analysis centralized as well? So those two questions are quite uh, similar. Um, who wants to go first, Nelson? Okay, okay. Uh, the data collection, we are using cyber tracker. The training, we had the training for all the operational sites and the analysis is done at site level. So we've got administrators in each of the areas that's in Chama, 
Bwaza and Nyeka. And all are using SMART. The analysis, we use SMART. So each site has got a SMART in software. Uh, same response, Simon. Just to say that um, I, I think at a national level, this data is not centralized, and I think um, I think that, that that's what brings a lot of segmentation and application and, and learning um, in terms of um, the data that we collect. Um, the landscape also intends to apply smart, and uh, this is through the Department of Wildlife. Um, I, I think it's, it's a good tool um, using cyber trackers, etc to collect law enforcement data. But obviously, I think the centralization is the key and sharing makes it easier if you have a centralized you know, information system. Okay, uh, thank you both. Um, there's another very interesting question here. It says there's a lot being said about wildlife. How about, um, how about logging? And also there's an example here of um, a trafficking routes. Um, Oshi to Nakonde. Um, any comment on logging and the uh, trafficking of timber in the landscape? Yeah. yeah, I think on our side, not only logging, but mining as well on the Zambian side. The Kusuzi is basically facing that. But as you, as you combat wildlife crime, you are so, um, you are so uh, controlling that, that level of mining and, and logging. It's, 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 it's quite high on the Zambian side and uh, not much on the Malawi side, uh, I must say. So much as we, we don't highlight um, logging, mining, etc., cetera, um, it's there, but uh, it's something that is still under control within the framework of the project. Okay. Anything to add, Mason? Yeah, I think uh, on our side, mostly it's uh, in Nick, but the logging is at small scale. And we've got a, a specific term that mostly deals with, with logging. And that's around Karong, Karonga area, in the western part of the of Nika National. So the, but trafficking is not really, really there. Okay, cool. Um, another question here um, uh, from Philip. Um, how is the coordination playing out beyond the national level, i.e. district level and the community level? Each settler, are community representatives included, community representatives included in the national structures? Who will take this question? Yeah, I would say I would say yes, um, because under under the I think Malawi side government gov governance structure, um, we have what we call the district development committees, the area development committees. Um, all the collaboration around that, I think the representation is linked to the development agenda of that particular country, a particular district. So in, in the simple terms, yes, um, the communities are, uh, through their structures that I just mentioned, represented at, um, at a district level. And, and that, that translates into uh, the national level platforms. Um, on the Zambian side, I think Nelson, you might help me as to how the, C the CRBs are linked to the national level, district level, thank you. Okay, another question here is more of a concern that there's a high number of military and intelligence officers in you know in in, in combating wildlife crime activities. Uh, the question is how successful will these lead task forces be with the inclusion of military and intelligence officers? Um, Nason first, then and then Patricia. Oh, so Simon, uh, we're reaching our time limit, uh, small, uh, almost. So I would um, okay. suggest that um, we also had a community question for Nason uh, on the community representative from the Zambian side. So maybe he can combine the two questions, the last one, and then Patricio can, can, can end with the last comment. Okay, thank you, Lisa. 
Simon, come again. What was the question? Well, the first one was uh, was was more of concern of um, a a high proportion of military and intelligence officials in the LIP task forces. How do you see the LIP task forces succeeding with such a representative representation of military and intelligence officials? <laughs> Okay. What, uh, what is the value of the military? In other words, what is the value of the military in these task forces? Yeah, uh, I think uh, there are situations where we would need military. I remember when I was still working under national parks in, in Zambia, we had a situation where poachers had had shot at our staff, and access was difficult, so we. It was very easy to call upon the Air Force for, for the res rescue missions. So there are different situations when you are out there in the bush that you need uh, other military security wings to, to combine forces with. So I think it, it will work. Yeah, it, it, it does provide a platform for engagement because they are part of the society at national or local level. So you bring them together that they can begin to understand the, Syrian, the seriousness of this crime. But also the fact that they have been, they have, they, some have been able to arrest some of these military people, intelligence people. I, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a clear sort of indication uh, that uh, nobody is spared in, in combating wildlife crime in the landscape. So if they decide to, to ignore the sort of messaging, the sort of you know, uh, interaction, collaboration, then they should know that the law will not spare them. Okay. I think there's one outstanding on community. Can you quickly address that before we close? I think it was specific to Nason. Yeah, yeah at, at local level, like in the, the Nika Waza Association, which is composed of the NRCs around Nika National Park and uh, around yeah, around Bwaza. Then on the Zambian side, we work with the uh, CRBs, which are formed by by law. The Wildlife Act provides for the formation of CRBs within with communities that would want to get involved in in wildlife conservation. And they also uh, end up getting benefits from from the hunting revenue within the, their areas. So the CRBs are part of the requirements by law in Zambia. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Nason. I think there are a number of comments and questions. We're going to collect these and share with um, the team from the Malawi Zambia TFCA. Some of them perhaps might help you to rethink and re-strategize how you engage in the landscape. Um, I would like to hand over to Lisa and Clara. Thank you, Simon. And uh, thank you also, Patricio and Nathan, for the presentations and the discussions. Um, I think it was very interesting to learn more of what happens in uh, Malawi Zambia TFC on law enforcement and poaching. Um, also, uh, please note that on the 4th of August, we have a, a pres the presentations on um, uh, coexistence uh, and sustainability in TFCAs. And there we also uh, will dive deeper into a Malawi Zambia case study um, of the so called Komako um, model in the corridor between Kusungulu Kusuzi. So, if you're interested in Malawi Zambia, you can also tune in again then. Um, but I would like to thank you all. Um, the recordings will also be published on the TFCA portal, so you can have a look at that as well as the presentations. Um, and Clara will send out an email to all at the, hopefully at the end of this week. Um, and then I hope to see you again at any of the other sessions. Um, please, if you want to um, and wave goodbye, just uh, put your video on and um, we can briefly see each other before uh, we continue with the, um, with the, with the rest of our day. Goodbye, all. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.